and we were on our way to hell when all hell had broken loose against us there was no hope father you came along in the image of your son jesus and laid down your life father no one killed you you laid down your life thank you jesus that you saw us in the misery of our sins and you decided to redeem us and make us alive today in you that is why we come this morning to celebrate your goodness to thank you for that which you did for bible says while we were yet sinners you saw us with your eyes of mercy eyes of compassion and you laid down your life to save us we celebrate your goodness and this day father we say thank you for what you did and i pray that by the reason of what you did may everyone here that is held captive in any form be set free this morning in the name of jesus anyone that is going through any trials of life i announce to you your liberation morning has come in the name of jesus christ and we thank you father for what you have for us today touch our viewers as they watch make a difference in their life and most especially to these ones that are here present with us in church in jesus name we pray and the people of god shout a big 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 like you understand that the lord has risen shout you know when the conference was going on my wife was always um taking census of how many people were watching at once there were nights there would be one thousand people on the line i was like who are these 1,000 people? But this morning when Dr. Awasu walked into my office, he said last time when my brother was here, I was just so busy with many things, but I surprised him because he didn't know that I was with him in the spirit. I said, Doc, I don't understand what you mean by that. He said, I watch the service, all the services. I watch them at the comfort of my home. And it clicked to me that if people like Doc were watching, Oh my god could you believe that that dr wasum will have time to go watch us on internet then i knew that those thousand people were real beginning with him hallelujah Amen. to let you understand that this internet message is going far before i get into the word this morning i want to challenge us that we need to be on tv life oh lord no you don't believe it i said before i go ahead i want to challenge us that we need to be on live tv hello don't we sing good enough than some of the things you see on tv don't we preach better enough than some of the things you watch on tv so what stop us is it because we are what nothing will stop us in jesus name Please, we were intending to be on the air this month, but please, the target is next month. We are giving a station that we have been given a good price to go on the air on Jesus Christ. I just want to say that as I speak, if the Lord leads you to sponsor our TV ministry, let me know privately. Amen? Because that is not something that I'm going to stand here and say, who want to sponsor? Please if the lord leads you to sponsor our tv ministry see me privately and you will be highly blessed because you can't count how many souls you'll be touching hallelujah victory by the resurrection of jesus christ is our team for 2014 easter week victory by the resurrection of christ had jesus died and never rose again we will not hold these microphones we will not be able to speak about jesus we will not be able to debate about jesus we will be all making a loud noise without the resurrection the bible said the one thing that distinguishes christianity from other religions is not the blood of christ muslims have no problem with the blood of christ the Hindus have no problem with the blood of Christ. In fact, in, in the Quran, the blood of Christ is mentioned. Hello? 
Bodies don't have any problem with the blood of Christ. But when it comes to the resurrection of Jesus Christ, that is the thing that makes a difference between Christianity, which is not a religion. Hello? I have let us understand many times that Christianity is not a religion. It is a relationship between man and his maker. And until you come to that relationship between you and your maker, you are in religion. For many years, religion could not save us. Religion was a way that was making man to struggle to meet God. Religion was a matter of do and don'ts. But Christianity is God coming down to your level. God coming down to man in the form of his son to say, for these years I know you can't rise up to meet me where I am, but I can come down to your level and redeem you from the dungeon of sin because before I created you, you were the most precious thing in my heart. Therefore, I will not allow you to perish. I will redeem you by any means. Whatever it takes, you shall be redeemed in the name of Jesus. Amen. If you go to the grave of Buddha, you will still see dead bones right there. You go to the grave of Confucianists, you will still see dead bones right there. You go to the grave of Muhammad, you will still see dead bones right there. But the only grave, ha 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 ha, the only grave, uh, my label says, uh, yeah. that when you go in, uh, my, my label, you see no dead bones. Oh, Jesus Christ of Nazareth. The grave that when you go, it is a monument today. It is an episode of what happened. It is a touristic site. In fact, you know, while I was studying this, I discovered that Joseph of Arimathea decided to make himself a new tomb because the bible says jesus was laid in a borrowed tomb that belonged to joseph of arimathea and if you go to israel today and they take you to the tomb where jesus was laid it means joseph of arimathea built for himself a better tomb or another tomb in which he was laid uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. I'm going to mess up with some of your theology this morning. Because the Bible says in those days men buried their tomb before their death. And Joseph of Arimathea had buried his tomb before his death. But the Bible said Jesus had to bury the tomb because he didn't need to keep no dead bones there. He needed it only for 72 hours. <laughs> he needed it only for three days. Hallelujah. But I believe that Joseph Aramathia built another tomb for himself because the Bible says right now as we speak, the tomb of Jesus is a memorial of what happened of to show the empty tomb that he rose again. He is not in the grave. He is risen. And because he rose again, you shall rise again from every deathness of your life. Oh my goodness. Oh, Father, help us. Our text was read to you. I'm just going to pick some few things from my text and show you how corruption had begun in time immemorial. Uh, there's no new thing under the sun. No new thing under the sun. The Bible says in our text, one thing I just want to pick from there to let you know, that the gods that guided the tomb of Christ so that his disciples would not come to see him by night are the same God that were bribed to tell a lie that we were sleeping and the disciples came and stole him away. If you were sleeping, how did you see the disciples stealing the body away? You know, only liars know how to lie. Because if you lie, you need another lie to confirm the other lie. Every time you lie, you keep looking at another lie to confirm the other one. But thank God that whether they lie or not, 
the disciples knew within themselves that they did not go to church by night. Hallelujah. They knew them within themselves that he rose again from the dead as he said he was going to rise again. Hallelujah. And we come this morning to celebrate the goodness of the Lord such that in your life, whatever is holding you bound, whatever has kept you bound for all these years, for these four months of this year, you shall rise again today. I say you shall rise again today. Where's my bandits? Let me see one song before I go ahead. Celebrate, Jesus, celebrate. 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 As you celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, may everything that was dead in your life begin to resurrect. The grave could not hold the bones of Jesus, so he rose, he rose again. The grave could not hold Jesus. If he rose again, you shall also rise with him. Hallelujah. Have your seats. Four things. The resurrection of Jesus or the death and resurrection of Jesus brings to your life. Four things. Four things. Number one. The resurrection of the birth, uh, well, the birth, the life, the death, and the resurrection of Jesus brought us number one thing. I'm going to do four arrows today. Four arrows. Number one arrow, redemption. The resurrection of Jesus Christ was a proof of your redemption. Or the coming of the Lord Jesus was to bring you and me redemption. In Ephesians chapter 1 verse 7. The Bible says, in Christ, we have been redeemed. And the forgiveness of our sins, according to the riches of his grace. In Christ, you have been redeemed. And you enjoy the forgiveness of your sins. 
because of the riches of the grace of God. Redemption can only be given to somebody that was guilty. Redemption can only be received by somebody that was due for punishment. And the Bible says we were all sinners going astray on our way to hell. And Jesus, let me tell you some revelation here. Everything written in the Bible, if you want to make it a storybook, it will remain to you as a story. But for you to have this word jump out of the Bible and become reality in your life, you must have a revelation about that place. You must have what? A revelation. A revelation of what Jesus did by the redemption he brought to us. You must know it was not just a story that some man came and died for your sins. But there must be a reality of the fact that you recognize you were once a sinner. You used to enjoy sin. But Jesus comes and set you free and redeemed you and took that appetite of sin. He says you enjoy redemption which goes with the forgiveness of your sin. Ah, thank you, Father. Another thing that the redemption did. Galatians 3.13, the Bible says, Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Be made a curse for us, for it is written, Curse be any man that hangs on a tree. Brother, when I read this thing, Brother Ben, this became real to me because in our culture, in the village, if somebody hung himself, it takes a ritual, a special ritual for that one to be brought down from that tree he hung himself. Nobody just go cut him anyhow. Some special things are done. They are not godly things, but it is a, a curse for anyone to die by hanging himself on the tree. The Bible says here, he has redeemed you from every curse of your life. For it is written, curse be anyone that hungers you. He took your curses all on the tree. No matter what curse you find yourself inside, I come to announce to somebody today, you can self-deliver yourself from a curse. You can appropriate the revelation of the word of God in your life and will deliver you from curses. Hallelujah. When I was growing up in faith, they taught me how to self-deliver myself from any curse. If you don't have a revelation about the word, you need somebody to deliver you. Hello? But if you have a true revelation of the word, you can self-deliver yourself by appropriating this word, claiming this word, understanding this word, receiving this word, taking this word, accepting this word, and it becomes reality in your life. Hallelujah. Second thing that Easter brings to us. Reconciliation. The Bible says we were alienated from God. We were strangers. We were foreigners. We were enemies of God. We had no relationship. We could not call God Abba Father. That is why when Jesus came and was calling God his Father, he was persecuted more than he was blaspheming because he understood the relationship he had with the Father. And when he hung on that cross, he reinstituted that understanding to you and me that what I used to enjoy with the Father by my death on the cross, you can understand also call God and our Father. Hallelujah, somebody. Colossians 1.21 And so, and you that were once far away, once upon a time you were far away from God, you were enemies of God in your minds, only conceiving to do evil, but now has seen what reconcile you to the Father. We have been reconciled to the Father. I can kneel down and say, Abba, Father. Father, I thank you. Father, I bless your name. Father, I give you the glory. Father, I thank you for my family. I can call God Father now with every confidence. 
But that is what in time past you could not do. Because we were alienated. We were taken away. Our sins made us far away from God. Hallelujah, somebody. Reconciliation. 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 19. For God was in Christ. Listen to this. For those who are debating, listen to this revelation. Otherwise, it's a mystery. You can't bargain it and know the truth. It is a revelation and it must be a mystery. Hallelujah. 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 19. It says, For God was in Christ. Hello? God was in Christ. How do you separate somebody that is in you? Reconciling the world to himself. Hallelujah. God was in Christ reconciling the world to himself. Not counting their iniquities against them. You see, God was in Christ reconciling the world from, to himself, not counting men's iniquity against them, but erasing all their iniquities as they come to Jesus to say, Father, forgive me of my sins. He erased their iniquity. He was reconciling the world through Christ because without the coming of Christ to live on this planet earth and go through what we went through. And in fact, I will show you at the end that death didn't have power over Christ. Now when we studied the seven saints of Christ on the cross, the last thing he did was into your hands I commend my spirit. I will show you a different revelation this morning as we conclude this. Hallelujah. Number three, restoration. The death, resurrection of Christ brought you restoration. You cannot be restored if you didn't used to be somewhere. You cannot be restored something that you didn't used to have. For you to be restored, it means you used to, you used to be somehow, and then you fell, now you are being restored back. The good news about restoration is that you are not always just restored what you used to have. It's always in abundance. Remember in those days of hot politics in Cameroon, and uh, people who were opposing the opposition, or what are the ruling party, people went and burned their houses. You no, know, I remember my uncle suffered from that. They burned down his house. But as though it was a good thing, when they paid him the money to rebuild his house, he built a better house than what he used to have. <laughs> he was restored back something better than what he used to have. I come to announce to somebody this morning that restoration is coming your way and you are going to have better than what you used to have. Hallelujah! Joel 2.25 says, I will restore back to you all the years that the Swami locusts. All the kind of locusts you can think of. All the kind of plagues you can think of. God says, I will restore back to you all the years that were destroyed. You see, that is why the Bible says, when you are in Christ, you are a new creation. For all things have passed away. He renews your life. He restores your life. He takes your life to a new dimension and begin to do new things. In fact, he even restores your age. Now, this is very real. Check it out. All those are friends that are still in the world. And living in smoking, drinking, womanizing, and all these things you can think of. When you go back to Africa, and look their life and look their own. It looks like you are their follow back. Look like you are their follower. Because life in Christ is renewed every day. You get younger every day. You get restored every day. Hallelujah! Jeremiah 30 and verse 17 says, I will restore back your health. Is anyone sick here? Your day of restoration has come. He says, I will restore back your health. Every sickness that has taken away your health, God says today, it's your day of restoration. You shall be restored back to what you used to be and better. Hallelujah, somebody. Restoration is your portion this morning. And lastly, 
the last arrow resurrection ah thank you jesus jesus is coming living a life here on earth suffering falling seven times on his way to the cross and finally enduring the cross being put in a borrowed tomb and he rose again brought you redemption brought you reconciliation brought you restoration and brought you rest resurrection resurrection as you know any word that is a rare the real word is after re because re is the prefix of that word so if you say resurrection so the real word there is rection now anything that must resurrect means once used to be alive and died hello anything that must resurrect means that thing once used to be alive and then died and then now they have to re bring it back to the way it used to be and a better state even so the bible says ah, yeah, 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 yeah. in first peter chapter 1 and verse 20 and verse 3 before you turn there let me say what first Thessalonians 4 14 says we believe that jesus died you see that's why if i were one of those that are advisors to Mel gibson i will tell him that it didn't just end in the grave you acted passion of the christ which just showed his sufferings and in the grave or the cross we need to know what happened in the grave and the life after the grave i don't know whoever one will recommend it to me gibson to act that we will, we will, we will patronize that movie because his life did not just end on the cross my beloved there was a greater revelation after the cross the cross just showed what he did for you but the cross did not end there the resurrection of jesus christ shows what you benefit after he went to the cross hallelujah jesus oh my god the bible says for we know that he rose again from the dead even so will he come also to rise up or to raise up those who fall asleep in him now this is the confidence that we christians have i mean christians in quote born again believers not christians as to religious context are we understanding me now this is the confidence that we christians have i mean christ-like that's what i'm talking about living a christ-like life that's what christianity actually means the confidence that we Christians, we Christians have is the fact that as far as the grave could not hold him, ah, the grave shall not hold you. The grave shall not hold you. The grave shall not hold you. Whether you live to hear the trumpet sound when the dead in Christ shall rise first to ascend in glory with the Father, or you die from this physical body, the truth of the matter is that the grave shall not be able to hold you because in you is the DNA of Jesus, and if the grave could not hold Jesus, the grave shall not be able to hold you. Hallelujah! Now listen to me as I conclude. The Bible says in his last word on the cross, he said, Father, into thy spirit or into thy hands, I commend my listen to the revelation behind this place. Now, when do we call somebody dead? Is it when one of their head is chopped off? Or is it when his leg is chopped off? Or is it when his arm is chopped off? When? When the breath of God has done what? He can still be cutely looking well dressed and lying there. As far as you take the pulse and nothing is responding, we call that person what? Now listen to me carefully. No one could kill Christ. Because 
even hanging on that cross there was no way he could die he could stay on that cross for many 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 days why because for somebody to die his breath must be taken away or his spirit man that makes him alive must be taken away and God had no reason to take it away from him. Because the only thing that brings death is sin. Now, for those who still debate to really know whether Jesus took their sins on the cross, let me show you this revelation. The only thing that killed him or not me let me use the word kill. The only thing that caused him to give his life or his spirit back into the hands of the Father was the fact that he was carrying your sins. Because without sin, he could not die. Because the Bible said the wages of sin is what? Death. So how can a man who have no sin die? There was no way Christ was going to die. He was going to live forever. And so he had to look some sins in order for him to die. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. When he was looking those sins, he came to a nation called Cameroon in Africa, and he traced a little tiny village called Krude. And he came there, he went to the chief palace, said, I need some sin owners here to give me their sins so that I can die on that cross and the first one in that family said ah we don't have many people who want to own up to give you their sins but my, I am the grandmother I will give you my sins and the grandma gave their sins and they began to pray for the rest and Jesus was still passing by and said ah, nobody else to give and that good Sunday morning the light of God shined over Victor's life and Victor handed his sins to Jesus and Jesus went on and looked for many many homes as many that gave their sins to him he began to prepare himself to die that is how he was hanging on that cross for a couple of hours he could not die because he had to go around collecting sins of people and I believe he took your sins 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 and because he received your sins upon himself that was the only thing that gave him the grace to die so that you can be sin free why are you still struggling with them do you have a conscience yes when you miss the mark what happened your conscience prick you when your conscience prick you what is that saying repent hallelujah and that is how Jesus now had to say, now that I have some sins, Lord, into your hands, let me give my spirit so that I can go. Hallelujah! That is the only way through which Jesus could die. Because when he had received the weight of the sin of the whole world upon himself, he said, God, will you take the spirit? He said, no, until you give me. That's to tell her they are one. Hello? And God said, okay, give me now. And he said, take the spirit so that this body can rest praise the name of the lord and he gave him the rima you see the debate about the debate about god with our father son and holy spirit is not supposed to be an issue because you see the problem you have is because you are too early conscious and we live in this human being life in this human nature and so anything that is out of the human nature is a mystery to us so we don't understand it and so because jesus took the spirit man that was making him jesus and gave the father then his natural body rested and then that same spirit man he gave the father is the one he said will come now to dwell in you same god manifesting himself in three different ways this morning jesus was the most expensive gift the father had 
and he gave it. Not because of something good that you and I had done, but because of his love and mercy. The Bible says, while we were yet sinners, he died for us. I want to do something this morning before we come to the table of the Lord. If you are here, you have never understood the revelation of you giving your sins to Jesus. This morning, you have gotten it. The throne room of God is open for you to say, Father, take my sins. His blood is still flowing on Calvary. The Bible says he is seated at the right hand of God the Father, interceding for you. Why the Holy Spirit is right here convicting you now that you need to repent of that sin. Don't resist him. The Father, Son, and Spirit have always worked in perfect unity. I want to ask anyone in here that have never taken that step of faith to say, Jesus, come into my life. I want to pray with you this morning. As every head bow, every eyes closed, I want to ask that question again. On this Easter 2014, you want the cameras of heaven to record your testimony about your salvation. You want to tell Jesus, I am sorry of my sins. Can you take your right hand and lay on your heart as a point of contact this morning as I pray with you? Thank you, Father. Anyone in the house? Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes. It is the only decision that matters in your life. All other decisions you have taken don't really make sense. This is the only one that makes sense in your life. For our time purpose, I just want you to pray this prayer with me. Say, Lord Jesus, this morning, I have heard your word. I know that I'm a sinner and I cannot save myself. I come to you now. Forgive me of my sins. Write my name in the Lamb's book of life. That on that day when you shall come, I shall also be with you in glory. Thank you for hearing me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. And Father, to this end, I say to anyone that confess their sins to you, hear them, Lord. Hear them, Father. And do that which they have asked your glory in Jesus name now this is the second thing I want to do God gave his best on the cross to receive all of us here on earth there are some people here I know you have some needs in your life that need is not going to be met by just prayers that need is going to be met by you giving an expensive thing to God like he gave his son. 